Where it is? This gun is so... That's pretty good. Yes. Okay. Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another first impressions video. In today's first impressions video, we are taking a look at the AB Suppressors A10 Warthog. And before we get this video started, I just want to give a huge shout out to this video sponsor, which is, of course, Gators Eyewear. You guys see me rocking their glasses all the time in these videos. I am more of a retro guy, so I like the Skyhooks or the Starks. That's just me. They got some cool red polarizing options, other things, but they also have regular kind of more tactical looking ballistic glasses and they are offering you guys a huge discount code. It's like 40 bucks off. Now, they don't pay me for this ad space. I just really like their stuff and you can support me by clicking that link and anything you purchase from that link gives me a little bit of a kickback, which I seriously do appreciate. This is a pretty interesting little can that I am excited to talk to you guys about today. Now, I was just looking on AB's website before filming this video, and I did notice that now, instead of the Warthog, it's labeled as the A10. So, in this case, I have one that is labeled Warthog and not A10, but I'm imagining they're kind of switching the name to A10. I first got introduced to the AB suppressors with, I believe, their model that's called the Raptor, and it is a titanium suppressor that actually threads over the barrel of a bolt gun primarily, but you could use it on an AR-15, and it's a reflex design. So it kind of like threads over the barrel itself with a very large blast chamber that actually goes behind the suppressor. Really interesting can. I might take a look at one of those in the future on the channel. But that was my first experience with AB, and I thought it was really unique noticing the coil baffles that are visible with the suppressor. They have a very interesting, you know, kind of ribbed for pleasure look on the body of the suppressor, but it was intriguing to me. 
and then in doing a little bit of research recently into just trying to see what new rifle suppressors were out there on the market, I noticed that AB actually came out with the Warthog or the A10 as more of a duty rifle suppressor. And then when I saw the sub $500 price point, I had to pick one of these up and request to get one here on the channel. With that being said, full disclosure, as always, on my channel, AB did send me this suppressor to check out for free. They let me know, hey, if you don't like it, let them know in the video. If you like it, let them know, whatever. We just want to get good information to help improve our cans moving forward, which is, of course, exactly why you see it here on the channel in front of you. The company itself to work with was awesome. A bunch of great folks over there. And I just saw before making this video, these guys retailing around on different distributors online for like $480, which for a duty ready rifle can is very impressive. What you're gonna have here is a 17.4 steel construction suppressor trying to go in the way of a more durable, full auto rated suppressor AB switch to the steel for this option. Now, the other thing you're gonna notice with the Warthog series is the built-in flash hider up here in the front of the can. Now, I wasn't really getting a ton of tuning fork effect, but it is somewhat noticeable. I'll do one or two of those there without talking. You can barely hear it, but it is there. And I did notice during shooting, just again, a ever so slight amount of tuning fork effect. However, I would imagine this does a very good job reducing the flash at night. I have not tested that yet. This is going to be something that I test here in the future. So I don't want to comment definitively on that, but this is designed to, of course, help reduce the flash signature out of the suppressor. So what we're going to have with all AB suppressors is this very unique coil baffle design. And it does a very good job. I immediately noticed at the range, aside from somewhat of an odd look, it actually does a good job kind of radiating the heat away from the areas that you would normally see on the suppressor. And I noticed that through optics and other things, I was getting nowhere near as much mirage on this can as I was with a regular standard circular suppressor. And I thought that was really interesting. I believe that is a reason why they did this visible coil system or another reason why. And I think it does a fairly good job. Now, I did notice that cooling, although it is a steel suppressor and is going to take longer than titanium was relatively quick. And again, I don't know if that's just due to this design here, but I really did enjoy that at the range. And then also on AKs, this thing looks sick. On ARs, you know, maybe a little bit interesting. It's not something you're normally seeing on an AR suppressor. But again, when you put this thing on an AK, like an M92 PAP or a 104, this thing just looks right at home. It has a very com block style to it. And I appreciate the fact that AB lists it on their website with photographs of an M92. It is ballsy of them to showcase this on an AK and allow it to be run on AKs with AK testing videos on their website. And that's, I, I really like seeing that. Yes, we all know AKs are not the most concentric things on the market, but seeing a company willing to put their money where their mouth is and give you the information moving forward, if you want to throw this on an AK, you can. And again, that's, that's something that I really like to see. On the Warthog, you have your model, manufacturer, and serial number all the way on the bottom of the suppressor here. And that is the best place to do it for the life of me. I cannot really understand why any of these very large companies are still putting their serial number way up here where you are obviously very likely to destroy that serial number if you get a baffle strike. The front cap is not removable. That is welded into place. And I should say that the overall suppressor itself is not user serviceable. It is going to be welded together for as much strength as they could possibly give it. And of course, because it's not user serviceable, you don't want to run any rimfire ammunition 
through this suppressor. I went with the 762 Warthog simply because I wanted to run it on a few different AKs, but they do have a 556 variation as well, and the 556 is slightly shorter than the 762, but not by much. The cool thing about the Warthog, aside from their other suppressors that AB has made in the past, is that now this being again more of a duty ready suppressor is standard industry leading thread pitch in the back, which I think is like 1.375 by something, but it is essentially the same as a Silencer Co. Bravo thread pitch in the back. So if you have a Silencer Co. ASR adapter, you can put that in there. If you have an Omega to Chemo adapter from Dead Air, you can use that. If you have a Q Plan B, you can use that. Yankee Hill, the options are endless, and it truly is now an industry standard to use that thread pitch. I can't tell you how awesome it is to be able to pop this thing on all of my rifles that already have a Silencer Co. ASR muzzle device. Saves me a ton of money on devices, and I know that there is obviously some tolerance issues across the board if you're using a mounting system that's maybe not as ideal or nice, but again, it's nice to see the options that are there. On top of using the ASR adapter, you have this Bravo thread pitch that can go to a lot of JMAC AK muzzle devices. So there are RD360 that you can mount directly on most of your AKs, allows you to thread on the Warthog to any of those rifles, provided you check the concentricity first, and you're gonna be good to go, which again is really nice to see. How did this suppressor sound and perform at the range? I thought it sounded really nice at the range. The tone was pretty excellent, no complaints there. And for the most part, I would say it was almost identical to kind of my baseline testing standard, which is my Silencer Co. Omega. And at almost half the price point, that is absolutely phenomenal, especially when it comes with the ability to accept all the same adapters. We ran it hard at the range. I didn't even really cook a lot of the Cerakoting off. They did a great job there. And just a side note to AB on just the overall out of box first impression not a huge deal. I'll throw a photo up right now, but there was some blasting media on the inside of the blast baffle when I took it out of the box. It is not something that, in my opinion, would have like destroyed the suppressor if you popped around through it first range day. However, if you didn't know about that and went to start threading the adapter on and off, those little fine granules could have really easily gotten in those threads and made them not really have a great day. So just as a side note, that stuff happens all the time. If you are Cerakoting an item, you gotta blast it first, and a lot of that blasting media sometimes, it's not blown out all the way, can kind of just get stuck in those places. So I'm not faulting them too much for that, but this is just a little bit of a side note that if you guys are buying really any suppressor, whether it's AB or somebody else, just double check that. Always look through the suppressor and make sure you're not running into any issues. But aside from that one very, very, very minor QC thing, the can performed incredibly well. It does have a barrel length restriction sheet. With 5.56, you're working with a 10.5 inch barrel and it worked just fine. And then also with 300 blackout, you're using an eight inch barrel. For me, in my case, I have a 7.5 inch 300 blackout, but usually you got a little bit of give there. And we were just shooting subs, so not as big of a problem. And with 308, the other 7.62 that this is capable of taking, you want to go ahead and stop at a 16 or 20 inch barrel, depending on the exact rifle that you are shooting this with. But overall, pleasant on the ears, not freaky quiet. It wasn't anything that was like giggle quiet. But on a 16 inch gun, you could get away with a mag or two without issue, without ears. For me, I put my ears on after that and kind of wore them for the rest of the range day to give you a little bit of an indication on exactly how this sounds. I love seeing suppressors like this. And in fact, a lot more are gonna be popping up on the channel. And I think companies like AB are going to begin giving massive companies like Silencer Co., Dead Air, all the big guys, a run for their money because these other massive parts of the suppressor industry 
are consistently getting stagnant, in my opinion. The prices are not really coming down, and you have companies like AB dropping an awesome suppressor with almost identical specs at half the price point and being a little bit innovative with something new. It sounds great, and I, I really, really like it, and I love seeing the innovation of the suppressor market begin to expand and open it up for regular people out there that don't want to drop $1,000 on their suppressor. If you guys have any other questions about the ABA10, let me know down in the comments section below, and I absolutely will get back to you. While you're down there, head up to the description for those ways to support the channel, and as always, stay tuned. For more great videos, coming soon.